we're very curious about, you know, how did that compound transform and translate into these effects? And so we started studying the metabolism of the compound punicalogen, the selagitanin, um, found in, in the pomegranate. And it was known that it was transformed into uh, compounds like urolithin A and, and other urolithins uh, in this sort of class of postbiotics. All of your ability to transform into different types of urolithins depending upon the actual gut microflora that each person has. And so we started, we asked ourselves, are these compounds more than just the body's way of clearing the punicalogen from the body? Because most people who had been studying it had been looking at this is what, you know, is excreted, you know, when you, when you take this type of a food. And so less at what is the nutritional value. And so, so we took a, a deeper dive to see and explore, are there any real health benefits linked to your The most exciting thing was when we were working together with Professor Ulrichs, he put it onto cells uh, in the lab and he put it into worms in the lab. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And, and he saw an improvement in mitochondrial function. And one of the ways that he studies um, fundamental sort of lifespan and health span is using these this worm model, it's a very basic model. It's the C. elegant model that they, they don't live very long. And so when you feed them different types of bioactives, you can follow life extension. You can also follow um, the, what we call health span, which is like sort of the quality of life as you get older. And you do that by looking at, at their movements in a dish uh, with time. And, and what he saw was that when he had administered urolithin A to these worms that you got a, an expansion of lifespan by about 45%. And this compares to caloric restriction, which is sort of the gold standard, um, getting you the highest uh, expansion and extension of lifespan in worms, which is around 50%. And if you compare this to other natural compounds like resveratrol, uh, you know, you're in the 15 to 20 percent, depending upon that experimental setup. It was really quite a dramatic uh, effect on mitochondrial function that he saw and on in, and in this worm model. These results caused us to really take notice and, and think that this could be something really special and take it to that next level and start studying it by um, administering it directly to, to various mouse models. What we started doing is, is then feeding it to mice that were getting older. And one of the first studies we did was what they call a, a high fat diet model. And this is basically feeding mice sort of the super sized meat type of diet. And so they, well, they get fat as they consume more, more fat in their diet. And what we did is we fed the mice either urolithin A or uh, we fed uh, with the high fat diet or with the high fat diet alone. And these were mice sort of at the later start of their um, later part of their years. And what we saw was that as the mice were getting uh, older, we started looking at various parameters. And one of those was their physical activity and, and physical function and muscle strength. And we saw that the muscle strength was increasing in those mice that were taking uh, urolithin A by about 10% in their sort of grip strength as you measure in, in these types of models. But the thing that surprised us the most is we looked at the running distance and sort of the spontaneous running distance. You put them in sort of these wheels that they, they run on and they sort of run until they get tired and they stop. And, and what we saw was that these mice were running more than 40% more than the mice that, that weren't administered urolithin A. So it was a real shock to us. Um, uh, and then we started looking deeper into the benefits of improving mitochondrial function on on muscle function and, uh, and on skeletal muscle function and the general health. And we went that next step and we said, well, let's take a look in, in older mice. And in this time, we in that first study, it, it was a long-term administration. We said, well, let's do it for a shorter period of time and look at older mice and let's give mice the best diet. So no high fat diet. And so we followed these mice for about eight weeks and what we saw was something very comparable. And in fact, we saw an improvement uh, between 40 to 50 percent in, in running endurance in these mice. And it was very impressive. And 
you know, taking a, a closer look, we saw all these biomarkers that were linked to improved mitochondrial function in the skeletal muscle of, of these mice that were taking urolithin A. And so it was at this point when we started to see in, in multiple studies conducted by different groups that we were all seeing sort of the same thing in, in terms of improvement in muscle function, that this was something worth going that next step and sort of scaling up into humans and seeing if it actually translated into humans. And it was I'm already, you know, getting something to translate from, you know, cells to worms to mice is, is quite a feat. Um, translating to humans is another story. And so this is where we took that step of, you know, going from a small, you know, few grams in, into manufacturing at a much larger scale and then actually developing products that you know, we could administer to humans um, supplements and foods. And that's sort of how it started in, uh, in our exploration in human biology. It's very interesting. I mean, it's, there's been studies that have come out, I think it was uh, the year before last, on looking at people who are taking a Mediterranean diet and they tend to find more urolithin A in their blood than people who aren't taking a Mediterranean diet. And so that's, you know, certainly a, a combination of, you know, eating the right foods because these compounds we were talking about that are in pomegranates are also found in different types of berries, sort of raspberry yeah. and strawberry and, and different nuts like walnuts. Walnut, yeah. but, but you have to have that right gut microflora. So you, I have to believe that if you have that right diet, that helps steer the bacteria and the composition of the bacteria in the right way because they develop to actually transform the foods that they're eating on a regular basis. Our first study was trying to explore what was the dose you need to give to humans, you know, to actually see that effect. And so we did what normally pharma companies do when they take a first drug into humans. We applied the same sort of methodologies for nutrition and we started giving different doses. And we used that to sort of identify what would be an active dose. And what we saw was that after giving people 500 milligrams of urolithin A for a period of uh, 30 days, we saw an impact on the mitochondria function in the skeletal muscle, particularly in the leg skeletal muscle. And we saw that with both 500 milligrams a day as well as one gram a day. And we assessed this in, in a couple of different ways, but uh, the key way was the direct assessment by taking a, a muscle biopsy. So we went in and took a biopsy before and after, and we looked at the gene expression pattern. And what you really saw was this, and this is a very unbiased approach, and meaning that we didn't, you know, we saw all of the genes that were expressed, and then we looked at the ones that were changed after taking uh, urolithin A for a month. And what we saw was that there was an increase in the expression of genes linked to mitochondrial function which is very interesting because when you have this enrichment of the genes of mitochondrial function, it's a clear sign that there's increased mitochondrial biogenesis. And this is, this is something that you want to see. And you see this in athletes after they're, that are exercising. And we've also seen it in, in another study where we were looking at people who were sedentary versus active, and we were seeing a decline in the expression of these genes. And those people who were sedentary and and what they call pre-frail, so they're starting to have mobility problems versus those people who are active and maintaining active when they're old. So mitochondria function is, is really a key indicator of just overall muscle health, and, and, and that's what I thought was very exciting about that first study. Just sedentary, these people were older people who were average age um, of 70, but sort of 65 to maybe 80, something like that. And they were sedentary individuals, and so they weren't exercising. So there was nothing that was sort of turning on the mitochondria, uh, no change in, in diets, et cetera. So very exciting to see that in the very beginning. And of course, we, we then started repeating that in, in more robust studies. So what's very interesting about you know, how do you maintain proper cellular health from a, an energetic standpoint as you get older, and just at, at every stage of your life. And the way to do this is to maintain your mitochondria health. And it, we were talking about mitochondria biogenesis before and the production of, of healthy mitochondria, but getting rid of the damaged mitochondria is equally important 
because you don't want to have a bunch of damaged mitochondria inside of your cells and not a lot of energy and then the cells sort of being starved for that energy. And so this is what makes mitophagy so interesting. And then going back to what we were talking about, urolithin A, the discovery that was made by, um, by in Johan Ulrich's lab around urolithin A and and the mitochondria function, it also went to that next stage and showed that the mechanism of action was by stimulating mitophagy. And what was so exciting is that this is the first compound that was a non-toxic compound, that was a safe natural compound that was shown to stimulate mitophagy, not only in, in worms and in cells, but also in mice and then uh, we see this, uh, these very nice effects uh, on mitochondria function in humans. Ran a, a number of studies now um, looking at muscle function. I think one of the more interesting ones is, uh, is a study that we did in, in people that were um, middle-aged, uh, overweight, sedentary. And what they saw was that after uh, four months of taking urolithin A at 500 milligrams, a day, they showed an improvement in leg muscle strength by about 10%. So this was something that was a notably uh, physiological impact on the health uh, and that, that you don't see, you know, just sitting around taking a supplement, right? This was a big conversion from just taking a biopsy to actually seeing a functional benefit. We've, we've since done other studies uh, looking at people who are uh, older and having a lower mitochondrial function. And what we saw was that after two months, we improved um, muscle endurance, both in the first interosseous muscle, which is the basically your your hand muscle and it's the kind that you use to sort of grip jars that you open and, and also your leg muscle. So that was really exciting to see that transformation there. So we started to see, we've now started to see the impact of urolithin A and a number of different uh, human studies, all linked to mitochondrial function. Interesting point that a lot of people have asked us, you know, well, I'm not old enough for it yet. And quite the contrary, it's never too, you're never too young. We have a lot of athletes that are taking our product and really enjoy it. In fact, we've, we've recently run a study in uh, an elite and sub-elite athletes uh, for a period of a month, and they experienced uh, better muscle recovery uh, after uh, and less perceived exertion after a month of taking our product. And these are athletes at the highest level who are training. Uh, we're at a training camp. And you'll see the impact differently depending upon what your lifestyle is like. You know, if you're an athlete, you're looking, you're probably thinking about muscle recovery. As you get older, you, you're looking to maintain that muscle strength, maintain that endurance. And so it's a trade off. And, and of course, there's there's things that you don't feel, but it's you're having an impact on the mitochondria function. You may um, not feel it in terms of muscle, but you may feel it in a different way, like general energy. I mean, we've been, you know, the nice thing about urolithin A is, you know, we've been consuming urolithin A for thousands and thousands of years. This is what you get when you consume pomegranate juice, when you consume walnuts, raspberries. There's, there's nothing um, at all harmful uh, with urolithin A. It's the the safety has stood the test of time of you know of thousands of millions of people consuming it there have been a number of preclinical studies in in mice um basically uh administering urolithin a to them and not by us by other scientists and and they have seen an improvement in memory uh in in various uh, animal models and it's logical that that you would see that um, simply because that there's a demonstration that in, in a lot of disease models and a lot of progressive degenerative diseases of um, cognition, there's a strong link to mitochondrial function. And not only for just memory, but also mood disorders too. It's a whole sort of spectrum of uh, cognitive deficits have a mitochondrial link. Sure. I mean, there's, there's been now a couple of studies that have been published on uh, mitopure and the effect on immune cells, and the benefits are, are quite remarkable. You, you basically are seeing that it's helping the immune cells retain their stemness, um, which basically means it's preventing this uh, immune aging. And that's something that's, that's really exciting. We have a, a clinical study underway now over in Germany where we're 
doing a, a full spectrum analysis on all of the different immune cells and in individuals taking urolithin A. And so this is something that, you know, we hope to have some more knowledge and, and share with the public next year when the study is completed and all the anal analysis has been made. This observation that administering urolithin A to mice was able to boost immune systems, and, and I think you're referring to this paper where it was a boosting immune systems in mice and helping the mice immune system fight cancer better. So you can't you know, that type of thing you can't talk about for, for humans, but uh, because we're talking about a supplement. But I think that the fact that you see the impact on the immune system is, is just so exciting. I mean, because the immune system has, immune cells have mitochondria too, right? And so you're having this broad spectrum effect on the body by improving the mitochondria function. And this is where I think that you know, the power of, of you know, and Myopure have for general health. This is not just something that's targeting muscle. We were talking about brain before. We have a we have plans to run a study um, looking at the effects of, in brain. You know, there's this broad impact on mitochondria function in cells, and those cells are basically everywhere in your body. So that's the exciting uh, future.